Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up. Now, I must admit, I've been absolutely addicted to Windbound. It's not perfect, and as we'll go into in the review, it has its flaws, but it also has so much charm. Coming from developer Deep Silver and quite a difference from their previous titles, I think this one has high hopes pitted on it. Is this one worth setting sail with, or is it all washed up? Let's find out. In terms of storyline and narrative delivery, exposition is gradually told over several hours. The story of the ancient civilizations and their interaction with the creatures living beneath the seas, as well as their purpose and origin, are told through these cave painting style images, which unlock as you open each new chapter. While story is a touch vague, it leaves it up to the player to discover certain things, such as old abandoned ruins or pieces of broken pottery, and the further you go on, the more you understand. However, in some cases, it did feel just a touch too opaque. It is worth noting that you're not going to be interacting with any other characters. You won't be talking to people on your journey. It's a voyage for one person only, and that's your main character. Exactly where she came from and why she's there, and moreover who she is, is a journey for you to take yourself. In terms of the gameplay and controls, this is where things get interesting. Now, unlike what many of us thought the title would be, it really isn't like a Zelda or anything like an RPG. As mentioned, there aren't any other characters in terms of NPCs in the world. You won't be speaking to anyone else. And the emphasis here is heavily on survival. You'll start out on an island with little more than a few stones and sticks. And once you've got your bearings, you can whittle together a boat with some rudimentary oars to allow you to progress. As with all survival titles, inventory management starts out quite difficult with only a few slots available to you and a few crafting recipes at your disposal. But as you discover new items, so in turn, new recipes open up to the player. Here's how the general gameplay loop plays out. Once you have your boat set up and a few items such as hammers and axes, you'll be needing to gather food. This usually takes the form of melee combat with one of the many wildlife that roam the islands. It's not difficult to quickly whip up a spear, attaching a bone to it and heading out to find some prey. Holding the trigger will lock onto an enemy. You can strafe around them, dodge roll out of the way and then parry with counter attacks. Everything uses stamina as you can see up here and it's important to make sure that you've got enough stamina when you're entering combat as enemies will do huge damage to you if they make contact. In the default game difficulty mode which is survival, if you die you will go all the way back to chapter 1, only keeping the items you held in your hand. But after 30 hours of play I haven't died once and that's because as you'd hope the title is quite fair and there are many upgrades that allow you to make it much easier to survive. The combat I mentioned there, although challenging, each enemy has its own specific tells and once you study their moves for a short while it's very easy to take them down. Later in the game when you unlock the bow and then the very good bow, this gets easier still as you can simply hide out of sight and snipe them from a distance. The heart of Windbound is your boat. You're not given a huge amount in the way of tutorial as regards to the modular system, but after about 20 hours of play I suddenly discovered that actually this thing was far more tweakable than I first thought, allowing for you to extend it out to the sides, put more platforms on, add a fire onto there, separate bags for you to hang the different goods that you've collected, and even a boost through a rare item craft that I managed to make. The actual core gameplay loop is quite simplistic. Each chapter pits you in an area filled with randomly generated islands. They have different biomes. If you think something along the lines of No Man's Sky, you never quite know what you're going to discover, but they do become quite familiar. On three of the islands, there'll be what essentially amounts to a switch that you have to flick, and then you can go to the end area and then use your necklace to advance. It's from here that narrative is given to the player, and then you have a crossing, which essentially amounts to a huge storm that you have to ride through, at the end of which you'll have an upgrade. These in turn give you new weapons and abilities, such as your weapons causing bleed damage on enemies, or a more powerful spear or bow. One area that's going to be, I think, quite divisive is the way you sail the boat. You really do have to actually sail it. If you're heading towards the wind, which is depicted with the graphic, then you'll have to tack against it. You'll have to tighten your sails up and move left and right and jink your way up through the wind. However, if it's behind you, then you can let the sails loose and really go for it. As you build your boat up and add upgrades and things like that, then this becomes much less of an issue. But in the earlier stages, you'll genuinely have to put in 
quite a bit of legwork to get that thing moving. And you know what? I absolutely loved it. Then there's the constant risk factor that I loved. If you die, as mentioned, you're going back to the start of the game. So there are times where you'll see your stamina dropping down low. You may have packed some meat into one of your bags or you might have run out. And that stamina is dropping and there's going to come a time when you're going to need to get back to land, try and hunt and kill something and do all of this before you die. It's one of the first and very few survival games that had the balance for me just right of difficulty, risk and reward. There are other things other than the inhabitants of the island trying to kill you. If you're not careful with your ship then it's going to run aground potentially smashing components and parts off of it. Or if you get stuck on some coral reef, then these little annoying crabs will come and jump and attack you. Later in the game, you'll come across some sharks and the music will change. The atmosphere completely shifts and it is terrifying. If you go off the beaten path in your boat, then you're likely to find small areas with secret treasures to be found. Often these will come in the form of a stamina upgrade or a permanent health increase, but just occasionally you'll find unique weapons or an ingredient you just didn't know existed. This then leads to further recipes, new things to craft, and a serious rethink about what you have spaced out on your boat. So far, I've talked pretty much all positively, and I do very much enjoy the title. However, it has some flaws. Firstly, the lock-on mechanic for combat is a tiny bit clunky. It will look perfectly fine for the first character, but if you're fighting multiple enemies, switching between them isn't easy. You have to de-lock and then re-lock, which can lead to a few hits before you manage to do so. As you get better, you can mitigate this through your strategy, but earlier in the title, it's quite annoying. My other real gripe is that gameplay loop. Having you flick essentially three switches for every single one of the stages or the chapters begins to feel a tad lazy by the end. Although the core gameplay is enjoyable, it felt like they should have done a tiny bit more each time rather than have you do the exact same thing. Now as with all of these types of games, you progress far enough and suddenly there's a large shift. Many of the islands change. They'll introduce a host of new enemies, but it really did come quite late in the game. There aren't really boss fights, but there are certain enemies which are either larger in scale, have much more difficult attacks, or make you sit back as a player and think, do I really want to fight this? This guy knowing that if you're not that good you're gonna die and that's it you're going back to chapter one but if you beat them you're likely to get a few new components and be able to create some armor or new items i loved that feeling and it's really important to note that if you don't like that difficulty level there's actually a story mode here where if you die then you still carry on basically from where you are you just lose the things that weren't in your hand so there is that easy mode if you prefer that style of play. It does control very much like a Breath of the Wild style game. You click the left stick in to sprint, you can jump up and climb with an auto grab to allow you to climb up to higher places. I'd say it was a bit of a missed opportunity that they didn't include gyroscopic controls for things like the bow and the sling, but I know not everyone cares about them, it's just me. Overall Windbound, it's not a perfect game by any means, but it's one that I'm absolutely loving. It's that modular boat that really makes it. It's like the heart of the whole game. Yes, it gets a touch repetitive in its formulaic nature, but just discovering one more island or fighting a shark or gliding from the top of a mountain, it's just lovely. Gameplay for me scores 18 out of 20. And the controls, they could have been a touch better, particularly with the camera lock on and a lack of gyroscopic control. But they're still decent. They score 16 out of 20. Visually, Windbound, in my opinion, is a beautiful game. It suffers from a few performance issues that I'll go into momentarily, but it still is impressive. Things like the volumetric smoke system that actually allows for shadow to fall upon it. Yes, it might actually be using a polygonal model, but it looks great. The clouds are real clouds, and as you sail towards a storm, you'll see them coming overhead and the lightning come down, and those waves and the beautiful water and the way it's animated all work together to create something that actually feels very immersive. The different animals and the AI they've used for them is quite clever. For example, if you attack the baby boar, then its mother's gonna come straight after you. But you can also crouch and creep through long grass or hide behind objects to stalk your own prey. Now, there is a touch of random generation going on here, and some of those islands do begin to look quite similar, and it would have been nice for them to include a touch more lore in terms of discoverable story-based items within these areas. There are certain things, but it's generally a piece of text that pops up on the screen, just usually a small cryptic piece of exposition. Now, the performance of the game generally is okay. You're looking at 30 FPS for the vast majority. However, in the latter stages and some of the very large islands, 
this can drop down but it felt pretty decent the real issue i have is with crashes and i hate to say this but i have had i think five crashes since i've been playing the title and it seems to happen in a very specific area between each chapter you do the large sail across this vast ocean and at the end you go through a portal and it's every time i go through that portal almost it will crash to desktop and it is doing my head in what i've had to do is save just before this point and it's manual saving as well so when you have a crash i think the first time i lost about an hour of progress and i was raging because it's the kind of game that changes so you can't specifically recreate exactly what you did the first time round. there are a couple of visual glitches as well like the smoke sometimes in the fire will just change to a black square box for a second and then disappear it only lasts a moment but it's enough to just break that immersion for a second what i will say is that in handheld i really enjoy the look of windbound a smaller screen and what looks like near native resolution solution makes for a very crisp image you may notice a few dropped frames here and there but in this small form factor it just works perfectly the music of windbound is delightful The main loop of audio that plays when you're sailing on your ship, although a tiny bit repetitive, is so catchy. It's a lovely string-based piece of optimistic, classical, come quirky music. And it's got excellent dynamic sound, so this will shift very subtly when something attacks your boat or a storm brews overhead. And after a frustrating or difficult island where maybe you almost died or starved to death, and then you set sail again and that music kicks in, you can't help but have a big smile on your face. While I really like the visuals, unfortunately, some of those glitches and particularly the crashes, are going to hit the score. Visuals so far score 14 out of 20. They do need to fix those issues. But the audio is sublime for the most part and scores 18 out of 20. In terms of the price, the game's going to set you back £24.99 or your regional equivalent. And I'd say that's about bang on the money. Perhaps £20 would have been perfect. There are some aspects that are a touch rough around the edges, but in terms of escapism, there aren't many titles on the Switch that give you quite this feeling of freedom. There's the potential here to spend hundreds of hours just floating around the different islands, but when you're on those, don't expect to see a huge amount of variety. It does feel like a title that perhaps is going to have expansions or other content added over the years. Still, there's tons of weird little quirky things to discover, and as a whole package, I felt like it was worth that money. Here's hoping a day one patch fixes some of those crashes, as I'd certainly be upset if I purchased it and was receiving the crashes that I've had so far. For now, I'm going to give value 15 out of 20. If it gets a patch on day one, then consider that 17. So there we have it. Windbound is a really enjoyable game. It's very relaxing, but also quite challenging. If you'd rather play on the easier story mode, then crack on. But personally, I think the fear of losing everything is what really gripped me about the title. Here's hoping a day one patch fixes some of those annoying crashes. Windbound gets a switch up score of 81%. A big thanks to our patrons who support us each and every month. If you want to join them, all the links will be down in the description. And let me know down in the comments if you enjoyed the review. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya. Thank you.